three, two, one. It's James. Welcome to episode five of the every er, the, 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 five, four, three, two, one. It's James. Welcome to episode five of the Every Geek Podcast. Glad to be here with you again. Um, so it looks like we have the votes in for the podcast theme by E.R. Alien Life Form Brooks. And um, it's number two. So if you look back at episode four, basically it's just the two um, songs that he wrote for the Every Geek Podcast. And uh, we've had it open for voting for a whole week. And it's uh, episode two. Hey, Leah, how are you? Hey, Christy Dunn, uh, on the live on Facebook. If, if you happen to be interested in, in watching the podcast recorded live, it's done every Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Central, right here in Amarillo, Texas. So if you're from Amarillo... Um, you could join in actually live in the studio. If you're not, you can watch us live on Facebook. Or you could just keep listening to the podcast. Actually, I'd be happy no matter which way you do it. Hey, Tammy, how are you doing? She's giving me a little wave on Facebook Live. So excited to see all of you bright, bushy faces. Bushy tails, bushy faces. What is a bushy face? Is that a bad thing? We're not allowed to talk about that at work. We did a sexual harassment seminar at work last week, um, and one of the things that is now covered in um, under the sexual harassment laws in the workplace, or at least our company rules, is uh, you can't talk about facial hair. Think about that, right? A little weird. Yes, Christy Dodd, you know what I'm talking about. All right, cool. Um, so let's get to it. I guess there's no time like the present to get going. We did a little vote on my live. I do lives almost nightly on Facebook around the same time as this, but they, I try to keep them in a 10 to 15 minute range. Hey, Dennis. And on that, we voted on what we're going to talk about tonight. So the three topics we're talking about are going to be uh, Power List and Other Mentors. We're going to talk about... Um, Keto, and we're going to talk about <clears throat> DC versus Marvel. So those are the three topics for tonight. Um, let's see. You actually called off work. Well, good. Good for you. You should stay home and listen to me. That's always a better alternative than, um, what is it, ball bearings? Is that right? Yeah. Well, hey, Ebony. Ebony's mom used to work for me way back in the day. So, uh, let's talk about it. I've got my little handy-dandy notes up here. Waka. If you're on the live, you're about to get moved. You ready? I've got some new finds. Can you guys see that? Okay. Those are my uh, Irish blessing and Irish toast. Um, I went to an estate sale and found those. So, that was kind of exciting. I'm a huge estate sale fan. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea that um, you get to see into their life, and then you get to take some of their treasures home, right? I don't know. Is that... Whoa, almost lost you guys. Is that morbid? Does anyone else uh, think that that's kind of interesting and fun? So, um, for those of you that missed it on the podcast, I almost dropped the live feed video recording device onto the ground. So, yay. That would have been fun. All right. Um, by the way, this will also be on YouTube, hopefully by the end of this evening. So one more format to uh, hear or look at me. Um, so let's talk about Power List. The Power List, I, I actually decided to like restart everything, Dennis. Um, and you kind of inspired that, and the podcast kind of inspired that. So I went and I got myself a new, much nicer moleskin, a la Hemingway notebook. Uh, to put my daily power list. I actually put my statement of definite purpose on the front. If you uh, have ever read Think and Grow Rich by uh, Napoleon Hill, you'll, you'll know what that is. But it goes along with power list. And then daily, of course, I've got my power list notes. Today I won, by the way. I'm going to try and win every day, Dennis. That's, uh, that's my new goal. Um, today I had to hit my 7,500 steps. I read a chapter, Think and Grow Rich. 
I did 30 minutes of training, 30 minutes of motivation. I reached out to three potential customers I hadn't reached out before. So I got all that done before the podcast. That's kind of exciting. And then I put myself a note because I watch a lot of training during the day, right? I mean, I get on lives, I get on Zooms, I get on whatever, YouTube. And uh, I, I listen to a lot of people that are a lot more successful than I am at network marketing or social media marketing or marketing in general or just stuff I'm interested in. And I take notes. So I'm going to download an app I heard about today on a Team Zoom for Keto OS. Prove it. It's called Textelly, T E X T E L L Y. And essentially, what it is, is it's a. Uh, it's an auto texting app so that you can text your entire um, list at once, uh, which is, I guess, um, more effective than using your Facebook Messenger because not everyone's on Facebook at the time and not everyone has Messenger on their phone. So I've been concentrating a lot with my social media marketing and my network marketing on Facebook, and this kind of opened my eyes that I mean, texting is not really old school, but I might need to look at a more... You, you don't want to limit your audience, right? That's the only reason I'm doing a third camera so that we have... And, and I know I could use the same feed and there's ways, but I have a dedicated camera for each feed. So, trying to open the audience as much as possible. Uh, let's see here. So, my power list today I won. Yeah, and what does that mean? So, once again, the way that the power list works is it, it takes... Uh, depending on who you talk to, 14 to 21 days to develop a habit. And so you, you write down the same five, six, seven, ten, three things in the power list daily that you want to develop into positive habits. You know, I, I mean, you wouldn't put smoke crack, right? Uh, you definitely probably don't need a lot of help developing that habit. But um, what you do then is, is you win the day, and, and that motivates you to win seven days, and then you've won the week. And then when you've won 30 days and you've won the month, you now have a new positive habit. You can change your power list at that point. It'll evolve. Maybe I'll change it from 7,500 steps to 1,000 steps. And, and, and further along my uh, progressive cardio goal or maybe I'll just find something all together maybe I'll do a thousand sit-ups yeah it's probably not gonna happen I but yeah we can dream all right so what it means to me when I win the day is that I'm one step closer to winning my month developing a new positive habit and then by uh, also my year you know, by extension. I got like a brain fart there. I don't know what happened. So um, what I thought, though, is since we've already talked about the uh, power play, I thought I would give you um, the five-second rule, which I think is kind of cool. So the five-second rule, um, <clears throat> not like you drop, you know, something on the floor, and then you can pick it up in five seconds, and it's still okay to eat. This is the uh, five-second rule. It's a TED Talk by Mel Robbins and it's actually she says that the name is kind of lame because she only developed it for herself but essentially um, I'm going to put the link down below for the five second rule melrobbins.com slash number five dash second dash rule and what it is is um, a way to a, a proven way to hack your brain and your thinking so that when you um, start to come up with an idea your brain naturally cautions you and tries to to, to stop you from something new for it's a protective thing so what what happens with this five second rule is you literally say out loud five four close your eyes three two one when you make a decision and then you just do it so like maybe the decision is to get out of bed instead of hitting snooze so um i'll go ahead and put the link to that ted talk in the show notes because it's definitely worth watching or at least you know that there's like a 20 minute video that she interviewed on so, Dennis, that's for you. Um, final thing is, every day I start my day, I don't start my day. Every day on my way to work, I do the same thing. That I've done this for quite a long time. I listen to the Daily V podcast with Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, who's this crazy um, Russian wine guru that literally just riffs on anything. As a matter of fact, his podcast has zero structure. You know, I'm, I'm structured... 
I've got notes. I've got minute markers, so I know when to change segments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and I do that because otherwise I ramble. But Gary V literally re- has two or three assistants, I guess. I mean, from what it sounds like, that literally follow him around all the time, recording video and audio. And then he has another team at his office. I mean, this is a multi-million, maybe billion-dollar a year entity that he's created. And what they do is they edit down this um, live video into bite-sized morsels, and it becomes the Gary the um, Daily V podcast or the Gary V podcast. Or, he's got a number of different ways, either video or audio, that you can get him. But then it's like definitely, if you're thinking about just um, anything entrepreneurial or self improvement, um, I would definitely find five to thirty minutes. That's usually his range to take a bite of Gary V. I, I mean, I've got an eight minute drive, and well, if I'm picking up my cousin, thirty minutes, and it, it definitely fills my day. So we got Mel Robbins, the five second rule. We got Gary Vaynerchuk, the Daily V, and then of course. Um, We've got the MF CEO podcast uh, for the Daily Power List. Um, so that MF CEO podcast, it's episode number 107. It's actually hashtag MF CEO. And yeah, that's that's what it stands for. You, you're right. Um, Andy Frisella, who's another entrepreneur. Hey, Jade. 55-minute um, drive. Dude, you can get like two or three episodes in. And he does this stuff daily i mean there's posts if you you can follow him on twitter instagram the whole kit and caboodle he's constantly doing stuff i will tell you that one thing that andy fasella and gary vaynerchuk have in common is they're dropping f-bombs like it's nobody's business wow that was creepy like my um indoor curtain just blew like the wind blew it but the door shut and weatherproof so yeah I was like, really weird. Of course, the wind's like 50 miles an hour. You can hear it banging out there. It's crazy out there tonight. Okay, so that puts us at the 10-minute mark, which means that we're going to Keto AF. By the way, um, Keto AF is the name of uh, the person that recruited my wife into uh, this Keto OS network marketing deal. And I, myself, am not a promoter. Let me stress that. I, myself... I'm not a promoter, but my wife had immediate results, so I jumped on, and then I had better results. So our group has become known as uh, Bomb City Keto, hashtag Bomb City Keto, by the way, so be looking for that. And um, one of the things, yeah, thanks, Christy, for dropping that in the, in the show notes there, in the comments of the live. Uh, one of the things that really pisses my wife off is... I am way more ketogenic naturally than she is. And, you know, keto, we, we, we're we trying a ketogenic lifestyle, which is a very specific, not Atkins, not paleo, not low carb. We're trying to live a ketogenic lifestyle, which means essentially that we have a very, very, very restricted carb and very high fat diet. And, we supplement with Keto OS, which is um, a uh, exogenous ketone or a bioidentical ketone we take to get us jump started every morning because I'm into hacking. So if I can hack my brain or my body, I'm totally going to do it. But here's the way um, a ketogenic based diet, and I was actually talking to my cousin about this because she just started. Um, essentially, what we're looking at is this 5% of your total daily calorie intake or less is carbs. So let's imagine that we're going to eat 1,000 calories, okay? So what is 5% of 1,000? I don't know, it's like uh, 50. So we gotta keep our caloric intake or in grams of carbs below 50. And then uh, by the same token, we need to keep our protein um, to 200, so, you know, 200 uh, calories a day in protein, and then that leaves us 750 calories a day in fat. Um, and, and that's not easy, and, and let, me, let me explain that. 
um, let's say you eat three or four pounds of, let's say it's four pounds of food a day, right? I don't know. That's just the number I pulled out of my butt. But that would mean that three pounds of your food a day would have to be fat. And that is mind boggling. So it's not exactly the way it sounds. For example, a lot of my fat I get in my coffee, which is bulletproof. Um, you're adding butter, you're adding heavy cream, you're adding whipped cream sometimes, you're adding MCT oil. These are all fats, and they take up a good chunk of um, my caloric intake of fats a day. The other thing is, is that I started adding mayonnaise or sour cream or cream cheese or heavy cream to almost everything I eat or cook which also ups the fat content. So I was trying to explain it earlier today and it didn't come across well. So I thought I would just give you that illustration. 5% carbs. This is for a ketogenic diet. 20% protein, 75% of your total calories per day in fat. And keep in mind that this is for both uh, nutritional um, as well as therapeutic um, ketone lifestyle which means that this is a um, environment within your body that deprives your body of what, what most uh, like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or other diseases require to exist. So it's, it's putting you in a healthier state. It helps with neurogenesis, um, with uh, thought clarity. Um, it also helps with inflammation in joints um, and in, um, in joints and muscles. And then finally, the, the last benefit is purely cosmetic. It helps you re-sculpt your body, right? So if you're burning your fats, you're leaving your lean muscle, and it makes you look more like, well, it, you're thinner, obviously, but it also sculpts your body like it leaves the lean muscle behind. Um, so that's essentially what you need to do. Um, one of the other reasons, though, besides the fact that I think I've further mastered my fat intake than my wife is that you need to drink half your body weight in water to stay in ketosis and what that means then is so I'm well I started out above 200 pounds now I'm a little bit below 200 pounds this is 32 ounces right so I have to drink three of these every single day to maintain the environment that promotes ketosis if that makes sense. Beyond that, I also use ionic charged water. Uh, we have a special filter to do that. And I usually will add electrolytes through uh, by crushing some Himalayan sea salt into both my water and my coffee. Uh, you have to keep your electrolytes up. You have to stay hydrated. You have to stay hyper hydrated. Um, so, you know, if you're a hundred pounds soaking wet, you're going to have to drink 50 ounces a day to stay in ketosis. Then the final reason that I think that I am totally winning as far as uh, my results and, and being in ketosis more often, even with the supplement, uh, she's taking it twice daily, I take it once daily, I'm winning. And I think it's because, and, and I don't know a lot about this, so forgive me, Christy might know a little bit, but um, two things, I have a gallbladder, so I process fats better. She has to take a supplement, it's an ox bile, to help her process her fats. So I know that I'm getting more benefit of the fats that I am putting into my body. But more importantly than that, are you ready for this? For some reason, and, and again, this is just something, I listen to so many of these podcasts and lives. I, I, I know who said it. It was Megan Anderson, Megan Hemby Anderson. Hi, Megan. Love you. Um, but she said something about men producing, and if anyone can, can just drop me a hell yes if it's right, but men produce more human growth hormone than women. Um, I don't know if that's all the time or if that's like at a certain age or what we're talking about exactly, but I do know that that human growth hormone is also one of the essential uh, deals to get you the cosmetic effects of a ketogenic lifestyle. Um, 
Christy said, yes, it's easier for a man for sure. But she didn't drop a hell yes. Hey, if you guys are listening out there, drop me a hell yes. If you're on the replay, drop me a replay. And it really helped me. Every time you guys make a comment or give me a little heart or a thumbs up, it totally helps my edge rank, which is uh, how many people can actually see this. Okay, so that brings us pretty close to the 20. Oh, oh my God. And here's the last thing. Thank you, Christy. Here's the last thing. I have... All right, so uh, Paul D's, if you're out there, I know you're kind of doing a modified keto diet for your whole family. Thank you, Dennis, for the hell yes. Um, but here's the deal. Look, um, I eat very easily food as fuel. Uh, in other words, I very quickly adapted to where I don't need to get a variety in my diet, right? I literally eat three to five slices of bacon every day around 11 o'clock and that's the first piece of food that passes into my body um, and it's every single day I used to break it up a little and maybe have an egg yeah no it's it's five, three to five slices of bacon depending on how busy and hungry I am and then I don't touch nothing until lunchtime which is a necessity for me because I'm also diabetic uh, by the way, this totally helps with type 2 diabetes. My blood sugar level is awesome. Um, but throughout the day, you're going to get a craving, right? Sometimes you get a craving for sweets. Sometimes you just want a quick snack. And um, I am totally down with the fat bombs, right? So I only make one kind, peanut butter fat bombs. So between the peanut butter fat bombs, the high fat intake in my Bulletproof coffee three times a day, and... Um, me being okay with eating the same thing over and over, like uh, taco soup. Uh, Christy got to try my wife's taco soup. But um, I eat my taco soup every freaking day for like a week. You know, five days out of the week I eat taco soup. So I'm good with not having a huge flavor palette. And what you'll find out is as you get more into ketosis, your need for that flavor palette goes away. And you're thinking more along the lines of when do I need to fuel up next. Dennis, you're absolutely right. Uh, managing a hotel with a restaurant is a huge benefit for me to eat ketogenic because uh, literally I have all the tools at my disposal. I can whip up a fat bomb. I can make some bacon. I can do whatever I need to do anytime I need to do it. Ironically, though, my bacon's always cold. They just set it aside for me in the morning. You know, we close our breakfast at uh, 10. So by the time I get it, it's just, and I don't heat it back up. I don't. I don't know, man. Like I said, food is fuel. And that's kind of where I've, I've gotten to. Um, yes, bacon on demand, Christy. You know, you're there. Christy works with me, by the way, guys. And she's also in Bomb City Keto. So, yay. All right. So, it's a 20-minute mark. Wow, I'm so on schedule. It's almost like I planned this very, very intricately. Yeah, it's not, it's not really true. I, I have that as planned. Okay. So, uh, now on to segment three. DC is dark. That's what I'm going to talk about. I mean, that's it. So, I I finally enjoyed a, a Marvel movie. I, the two that I've enjoyed most are Logan and now um, Avengers Infinity Wars. Don't worry, I'm not spoiling anything. All right. Um, oh, he did three three years of third shift at Waffle House. Unlimited, unlimited making on. Oh, Dennis Jelly, right here. So, um. I like Logan. I like Infinity Wars. Um, and here's what I'm going to tell you. The reason is is that Marvel went dark in those two movies. I'm not going to say anything else about Infinity Wars. But it felt like DC. Remember, DC lives in the dark, right? I mean, Batman was like the number one detective comics dude, right? Way back in the day. And he's a freaking vigilante, right? And I'll tell you that the Dark Knight didn't always have a code where he didn't kill. The Dark Knight has killed, right? So, I mean, it is what it is. Even in the first movie back in the 80s, right? Jack Nicholson didn't hit... Oh, spoiler alert. If you're like 30 years behind. Jack Nicholson didn't have a good ending, right? And I mean, it's not like the Batman killed him. But he definitely, definitely lost a uh, major... Um, foe in that one so you know it was it's always been a dark comic dc has always 
been um, realistic in its uh, implications and, and in what happens. Uh, for example, um, The Flash, right? Uh, this season of The Flash, incredibly, incredibly dark. Uh, there are a lot of deaths. There's a lot of um, very, very sharp repercussions to what the team is going through. This entire season um, is predicated on this guy who can outthink them and who is manipulating them. Um, and so, like, literally since the moment that um, Barry got out of the Speed Force trap to now, he has been constantly outplayed by this guy, DeVoe. And it's, I mean, he barely saved his fiance last season. He got imprisoned in the Speed Force. It, it literally has been, I mean, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. My wife loved the Arrow. Uh, she really, really enjoyed it, mainly because I guess he's hot uh, to most women. But she stopped watching it because everything always went wrong for Oliver Queen. He could not catch a break. That's DC. That's where they live. They live in the gutter. And Marvel has finally recognized that. I offer to you the listener some proof. Are you ready? So I, I watched the new um, Deadpool 2 uh, full length official trailer today with uh, Cable who's the new character that's being introduced and here's Dead, there's something he's Josh Brolin's character says something to, to Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool looks him in the face and goes wow that's dark. Are you sure you're not from the DC universe? So even in their joking, you know, I mean, uh, Deadpool is famous for destroying the fourth wall and, you know, interacting with the reader or the viewer. Um, Marvel, and it's very tongue-in-cheek, is acknowledging that they're not nearly as dark as DC. So hats off to Marvel. You've, you've I mean, I've always enjoyed the X-Men, but that's really been it for me with Marvel. I was never a big Avengers fan. Um, it's always been DC for me, uh, I think, uh, with only a few story arc exceptions, but I really, they're really making me look at them. So thank you, Marvel, for doing, for making me um, an actual fan. As a matter of fact, because of that, I've taken another look at Punisher and uh, Daredevil, who are definitely, I mean, they, they were launched in, I want to say the 80s, maybe late 80s. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, as a response to the darker DC and how they were getting an older audience. So they were literally created because Marvel was too, um, you know, emo, basically. So, whatever. Argue that if you want to, uh, Chris Price. All right, so that's about it. That's what I got. I hope that was good content for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go... I do. Um, I Yeah, Jessica Jones, I started watching that, and I kind of fell off. I was watching it with my dad, Dennis, and um, which is kind of weird, I guess. But, I, you know, he was on vacation with me for a couple weeks, and we just didn't finish it. So I probably will. I had meant to wait for him, you know, like, but we haven't really had time to watch TV or, or coinciding vacations in a while. Um, I did want to talk about this person right here. This is Rachel Ghana. Uh, she wrote the book, The Thinking Log. She's actually calling me, I believe, on Tuesday to set up a time to do an interview. It won't be live, but it will be part of the next podcast. I'm going to do a review as well. Um, yes, those are new glasses, by the way. Uh, thank you, Susan. It's wonderful at picking out what I wear. So, uh, Let's see. Uh, what else? Oh, we're having a... Um, team shirt made for Bomb City Keto. Uh, so we'll be de debuting that soon on the Facebook and other outlets. There might even be a professional sh photo shoot involved. Um, let's see what else we got. Man, I cannot read that. Number two one, we got that. Oh, we may have a webmaster. That's what it is. Christy, actually, uh, Trevor, 
needs to get a hold of me, let them know. I need that website up and running so I don't have to keep using Anchor. And uh, then, oh, and then next week we're also going to talk about B.O.B. Maintenance, Bob Maintenance, Bug Out Bag. Um, I, as I mentioned, I replaced all my food this last time. Um, so after I replaced all my food and drink from my Bug Out Bag, I realized I needed to sharpen my knives and uh, blades. So I went and purchased this handy dandy sharpening kit. Look, it's like 75 bucks. Not a huge investment. It should last the rest of my life. Um, and it's much better than just a stone. It's more precision. So uh, this is a Lansky sharpener. I might do a quick demo next time. And we might see just how nice my knives come out. Um, so that's my main thing. We're going to talk about the Thinking Log, a novel by Rachel Ghana next week. And we're going to talk about bug out bag maintenance, how often you should change out your water, the best way to store water long term, whether it be in your car or your home, how much food you should have on hand and how often you need to change that out. Um, and uh, then we'll vote on the other two topics. Does that sound good? We'll go for four next time. Make it a 40-minute podcast. Unless you want to say hell no in the comments below, let me know. All right, so um, drop me comments. Just let me know. Uh, give me at least one or two other ideas of things you'd like me to talk about. Um, it doesn't. We don't have to talk about Marvel and DC ever again. Uh, the guy that voted for that actually isn't on the live, so that's kind of ironic, right? Uh, uh. By the way, if you're listening on Anchor, please go leave a comment. Subscribe to the podcast if you're on iTunes or Anchor. And give me a thumbs up because it literally is my life's blood. It's the only way I'm going to get more people. And, and that's it. I mean, that's the goal, right? Although I really enjoy our very small community right here. Um, hell no what? Hell no if you don't want me to talk about more Marvel. Alright, let's see. So next up, couple of weeks, can you talk about who you are hosting your podcast through and cost? Dennis, absolutely. There, we've got one. Anyone that wants Dennis's idea on how to set up, where to host, and what it costs to do a podcast. Uh, go ahead and drop a, um, I don't know, just drop the word mic. Drop the mic. Either drop a mic, an emoji, or you can drop the word mic in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and uh, talk about how to set up your own podcast studio and the best ways to host it, record it, and distribute. So good. Good job, Dennis. Yeah, I, it would be my pleasure. All right, guys. So until next week, we're right at the 30-minute mark. Damn, I feel good. Thanks a lot. Stay geeky.